but I made a few upgrades. Your covert skills need work. Then this is gonna be awkward. Okay, so I'm gonna be honest. Who else saw that and thought, I want one? Well, let's go make one. Okay, so this is actually going to split into three parts of a video. So we have the first, which is going to be the designing, the cutting, the fitting to put it on the 3D printer. The second one is going to be the welding it together and actually physically making it. And the third is going to be finishing it. So sanding it, filling it, painting it. This is part one. We're going to find a file, we're going to cut it up, and we're going to start printing it. First thing you want to do is, of course, find yourself a copy of it. I'm using Think first because everything on it is free. And it actually seems like be good decent website to use so looking at some of these they're not what you've asked for you just have to scam out and see those and just so no 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 yes so let's stick on that and then see what we get sometimes it might be a full shield you have to slice yourself by the looks of it this time they've given you the different rings you've got the center ring maybe the ring one ring two ring three and by the looks of it a couple brackets which is perfect and we can work with that so let's download all the files and wait for it to download. Okay, so it's now downloaded and as you can see, it's zipped, which isn't great, but we can work with it. The trick is just go through here, extract all, and then find where you want to extract it. So I'm just extracting it into a document folder that I know what I want, where it is, and then a select folder and then extract it. it might take a couple seconds and make be instantly like this. Perfect. So the next thing you want to do is, of course, cut it up as you might just be able to fit it onto a printer. However, you're going to use a lot of support, especially for like the center file. So let's have a look at that and we'll see what it looks like as a full piece. For that, we jump into Cura. I've got it up, so I've got an Ender 3 Pro and we just need to open the file and get it sorted. So let's look at the center. We're going to put the center in and hopefully we can drag and drop it in place. Now, as you can see right from here, it's just slightly too big. It doesn't quite fit on the Ender 3 Pro. Uh, it probably fits max one but not on the little one so we need to slice it for that you need to go to mesh mixer mesh mixer looks like this and it is really simple to use i might do a further video on it later if anyone wants it so you just go here you open the folder up and you get something that looks a little bit like this really simple to use so let's jump straight into it i like to generate faces so i can see the depth of everything and i know what's cutting if i'm cutting something important for example you don't want to cut here. If you cut here, you're going to slice through all of that. And you want to cut through quite a big distance that when you weld, it's not going to be too obvious. So I think what we're going to do is cut it straight down the middle there and straight down the sides there. Make it into full section. So let's start doing that. What you want to do is go into plain cut. Just make a cut. Um, I'm just going to try and figure out where we are at the moment. So we're vertical and I don't want vertical at all. We want 90 degrees. Uh, that should, in theory, cut straight down this side. In fact, actually showing you what it's going to get rid of and what it's not going to get rid of. As you can see here, it will mostly, I think all the time, every time I've used it, it will center it. So at the moment, it's cutting straight down the center, which is perfect. I can, I'm going to discard half because, as we've seen, each quarter here are actually the same, but they're just important parts. So in theory, we could print four of the same part and just turn it and attach it. It'll be easier to keep track of, it'll be quicker, you can just keep preventing these things almost like a machine. So, uh, cut, discard half, we want to fill the sides in, easy. The next thing you want to do is go to this side and do another plain cut. Turn it to 90 degrees. So, we now have got that 90 degree cut, let's go to the top and see what it's cutting through. Again, it's cutting straight through that center. Perfect, exactly what I want. We'll press accept. And we now have a single piece which we can rotate each time and make a full yield, which is perfect. Next thing you want to do is export it and save it wherever you want to. And we jump back into Cura. We get rid of this shield and we just open up and export exactly where we want it. And if we look at that, it fits perfectly. Now, as you can see, it is concave slightly. Uh, gives that nice shield shape and if we were to slice it now we'll have a look how long it takes it would take us four hours 39 minutes 40 grams of hillerman and the support would be 22 minutes of that so quite a while and i reckon we can maneuver this around so we don't waste the support that should just be turning it i think probably to about 
90 degrees so it's on that flat surface that we have just cut and yeah it looks flat it looks good i don't think it's going to need any support so it's not too great of an overhang angle let's slice it and we've cut it down to three hours 12 minutes with no supports whatsoever and it's only 27 grams of filament which i'm happy with that that seems perfect so like the last one all we're gonna do here is cut it up into small sections so do 90 turn it round, do 90 again and that is all is what it will look like now by the looks of it i don't think there's going to be many ways we can orientate this where it doesn't use a lot of supports it's just going to be trying to set your supports right they might stick a bit um so it might be just going back in tweaking it a little bit um but yeah slice that's pretty much all you want to do with it so set your supports how you like it and how you want it done and that's all so this will take about four hours 59 minutes uh, with quite a bit of supports, I think. So if we go to preview, there's like, all oh, that support, which isn't too bad. It's just a pain to get off. And actually, there's probably one or two ways we could have orientated it, but I'm almost certain you still need a lot of support. So like this, we could have orientated it like this. Let's slice it, shall we? See what happens. So it was something like four hours fifty nine. Let's see what it is now. I reckon it's gonna be a lot. It's gonna need a lot of support. Oh. that seems pretty good you know what okay yeah you know what that's not bad at all i would say definitely do that use the same material it's definitely gonna get it, be easier to get it off yeah let's do that let's save that to disc i'm happy with that let's go let's do it as ring one and then for ring two i recommend doing the same you can split it into eight if you really wanted to Okay, um, so ring three is slightly different. We're going to do gonna bits gonna be into the three, four so pieces like we did for ring one. And, and then that. I'm going to teach so you and show you how you can cut it, make it into sort of like eight pieces so it fits on more little printers like the end of three. It's not too difficult. Now, ring it three does is a lot. And a couple more unique. angles, but printer. So we'll get there. the easiest it's thing okay. is going to be split it into eight. So edit, turn it faces so we can see what we're cutting through, uh, cut planes. It's going to be a couple more. Cuts. Not many more cuts, but a couple more cuts. I'm going to get to 90. That is just finding one of these, whichever one does the vertical, and finding it and putting it to 45 degrees. We're putting in this one to 90. And then using the other one here, which for me it's this one, the green one, and putting it to 45 degrees. That will just be able to flit it all. I mean, so accept and that is what you're left with let's do this let's wiggle it round here you go so that's near enough perfect there's a slight bit on the bottom you take off snap you can angle it exactly how you want it so that's a bit too much you want about one more click so you want to set it how you want to set it really and just wiggle around and maneuver it so i'm going to set it like this maybe one more that way there we go that seems perfectly to me slice it and i don't think that will use much support at all so that only takes three hours which is a lot and yeah no no support whatsoever which is great that's how we want it we don't want to use so many supports it's a waste of material and if you can get away with not using any use it if it goes wrong it goes wrong you can always add supports after you have the bracket switch again you just want to slice through that middle make sure it's center and then fuse them together and i'll do, show you how to fuse them as well but it's as simple as that and it's going to be really easy and really nice to do that shouldn't use much support at all and that's how you do it so let's jump over to the 3d printer set everything going and let's start printing so it's all cut up it's all printed and we're ready to go welding now i'm gonna be honest i did this and i'm recording all this after i welded it together so whilst going through the welding i'll also talk about what went wrong right at the very beginning um so hopefully if you guys are watching this to go along with it you can figure out what went wrong for me and correct that one of the main ones before we leave this is actually the rings didn't fit quite right it might have been just how i was cutting them or printing them and welding them but they were just slightly off so you might want to have a look at that that was part one guys get ready for part two because 
there's going to be a lot of owls because I hurt myself a lot worse welding. It wasn't fun. Thank you guys for watching. Part two should be out quite soon. Thanks. <laughs>